Hi guys. Uh, welcome back to End of Dialogue. Uh, today we're gonna discover why contemporary music is so depressing. It just kills me inside. Go. Okay guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue. So this episode could ideally be considered almost as an introduction to the series, the podcast that we are about to launch, the tape dialogue together with Karim Kukru. You will discover who he is and the great enhancement of this podcast, which is going to come from him. And in fact, we chatted a little bit a few days ago uh, about what we were going to do about the project and I already had some ideas and he fueled them up and gave me even more ideas of how depressing and sad and negative is current music productions, the way we consume it, the way we listen to it, the way it's produced, created, played, anything all around it, okay? We're going to go through... 10 main points to try to bring into focus what are the main issues and what is practically completely changing the way we receive, consume, but also create and produce music, which is something fundamental, which I think we all have to reflect on. Are you ready? Let's start. Okay, so clearly a few things I'm going to touch are banal, are obvious for a lot of people, but it is important to knock on them, re-propose them and discuss about them, okay? So please be patient. The first point I want to talk about immediately, the first problem, the first depressing point is clearly the mastering which we could translate mainly, but not exclusively, with the loudness war. I'm sure most of you know what we're talking about. Uh, Let's just summarize the problem saying that in order to play contemporary and even reissue music, any type of music, on all devices, in all ways, you have to do a mastering, and especially, I would say, streaming on phones, on little headphones, earbuds, uh, radios, anything low, and, and which is, is especially lo-fi, low quality, must be mastered in a certain way and has to compete with all the rest of the other music, meaning that it has to be loud, it has to emerge. And clearly, if everyone starts to do that, which has been going on actually since the, the, the 70s, but it got a big problem it became harsh uh, i would say at least since the the early 90s but now it's it's the last 20 years is the worst era possible and clearly the more you do that the more, in order to achieve that higher volume that higher loudness you need to compress you need to put limits compress and at that point you will have a nice big volume but no dynamics and all a series of other problems. You're going to just lose the reverberation, the transience, the quality, the timbre of certain instruments, everything that makes real music. Now, a lot of people may say, but it's not always natural music faithful to the the truth. Uh, A lot of pop, rock, electronic music wants to be different from reality. And that's okay. I... 100% go for that. Absolutely. If it's an effect and I decide to want to apply that effect, no problem. Like, for example, mainly I would say electronic music. Absolutely. Then it's something desired, calculated, and applicated, implemented. But when it's just the normal way, the standard way in, in in which, by which you produce and publish music, and at that point, listen music, that's unbearable, okay? Unbearable. We are just killing 
everything. In any case, we'll, we'll reach more conclusions in the end. Let's proceed. I don't want to make this video too long, but it's, it is going to be long. Let's proceed now to point number two. Point number two is instead from the other side how we consume music, which, as we know, if we look at the numbers, if we look at the specs, it's mainly streaming. Also because, for example, Spotify is free. So it's reasonable that a lot of people use that, which is also can be YouTube and other services where we have an extreme compression, data compression and audible frequency compression. Okay, these are two different aspects that combine are combined with streaming unfortunately plus streaming loses a lot of information along the way okay but that, that's a different story let's just remain on the way we consume this type of music now clearly it is important to underline once again that this type of consumption kills the experience the way an artist intended to create a, a specific album the way you listen there is no concentration you're always doing something else. You're not paying attention. You're not listening to a full album. You're probably listening to a playlist, just one song here and there. I did an entire video on this, terribly recorded. I'm sorry about that. But the content is still absolutely top in line with what I think. Here is a link. You're also going to find all the links I'm talking about in the video description, okay? How to do a critical listening session, but not only that. Uh, hence, even the artist is undergoing a penalty, a huge penalty, not only from an artistic point of view, but also from a monetization point of view. His income is drastically reduced. I mean, maybe with Spotify, if you're good, if you're famous, you will have good income, uh, rewarding, we, we could say, um, engagement with the public. But there are millions of small little artists that are completely squished by that system. There's a nice uh, series on Netflix where they explain in detail the good and the bad of, of Spotify and alike. Okay, so this is also something we have to remember considering the artists because they just get a few fractions of cents for every streaming, every song, every track, not even the album, clearly very, very little. But apart from that, I mean, that's part of the game, but we're also mainly talking about the consumption of this, how we enjoy our music, which is something that is paramount to have, also streaming, but not only. Okay, I just wanted to touch this aspect. Let's proceed. Point number three. Now, this is going to be controversial, I bet. I would like to call this point the offer. The offer is too big. Not only music, I would say, even in books and, uh, I don't know, um, a lot of media is just overwhelming the quantity of productions we have. Let's focus on music. There are too many albums. Now, from one point of view, we have the revolution, the democracy um, that Internet gave us, the freedom to really participate with just a few bucks, just a few euro, you can create your own sound and deliver it to everyone in the world. It's fantastic. But at the, at the same time, everyone can do that. And I would say 80% is trash. And of that 80%, probably 40, 50, 60% reaches also market and wider distribution. And at that point, if there is a little golden jewel a special album well done well recorded but also great artist when it, it's submerged by all that noise by all those other artists mediocre artists you're never going to find that or at least it's going to be very very hard and it's and even if it's it, it, he or she is noted it's going to be very extremely difficult to go up in fact only Top pop stars or top hip hop stars reach that verdict, that pinnacle. But that's something different. I mean, it can't be only that. In fact, in the past, if we go and take a look at the past centuries, we had a lot of different superstars, but also with non conventional music, non pop music, folk, indie, blues, who also had great attention, great success. 
that's that can happen because the way we are building our industry and it is built and communicated unfortunately so the offer is too big we should somehow filter let's proceed point number four we've already mentioned it artistic quality now let's do a little game let's take a look so i wanted to do this little experiment we're going to take a look at the Billboard 200, which lists the 200 most famous albums, okay? Not tracks, not songs, but albums in uh, the U.S. every 10 years, starting from August 31st, as you can see, 1963. The, the rest is going to be April, because we are now currently in April, and I wanted to do this. Unfortunately, though... Um, Billboard was separated between mono and stereo records until this date. That's why we have to start from here. And if we take a look at 1963, there isn't that many famous uh, albums, I must admit. Uh, Stevie Wonder, Peter, Paul and Mary, Andy Williams, Beach Boys, James Brown, one of the, fam the, one of the first ones, John Bates. Uh, so, I mean... Surely people who created already here the history of, of music, Frank Sinatra, and things like that. But, I mean, not uh, top-notch. It was starting. It was starting already in the next year, following year, 64, 65. We encounter amazing stuff. But I wanted to do the closest to April. And let's skip now to the next decade, which is 1973, April. <laughs> And here we find clearly at the first position the dark side of the moon, Pink Floyd, but also Elvis Presley, Alice Cooper, Red, Led Zeppelin, The Temptations, Dan Ross, Best of the Beatles, uh, Elton John, Deodato, Stevie Wonder again. I mean, so many incredible. The, the Mahavishnu Orchestra, Carly Simon, Traffic. I mean, it goes on and on. The Birds, Steely Dan, The Allman Brothers, David Bowie. Look at that, Lou Reed. I mean, Im amazing, impressive, okay? Artists, songs, albums. Let's proceed another 10 years. We go to April 83, first position, Thriller. Uh, what else? Man at Work, Duran Duran, Lionel Richie, Toto, Def Leppard, Bob Seger, Pink Floyd, Earth, Wind & Fire, Alabama, Culture Club, Eric Clapton, U2, I mean, Okay, not maybe as the 70s, Christopher Cross, but uh, amazing stuff still. Probably we could say objectively a little more on the downside in respect to the 70s. I mean, the 70s is always going to be, at least in my opinion, the top of the tops. But still, incredible albums. Let's shift another 10 years. 1993, April. First position, Whitney Houston, The Bodyguard, Kenny G, Eric Clapton, Spin Doctors, LL Cool J, Depeche Mode, Sting, Dr. Dream, starting to have a little more hip-hop, Sade, uh, Pearl Jam, I mean, a, li a little bit of Michael, uh, Wells, Lenny Kravitz, uh, I mean, still pretty good, still pretty good stuff, I must admit. But we're going down and down. Clearly, the trend is lower. A lot of people are not going to agree clearly with this. I'm just telling you my opinion, and I'm showing you the trend. Let's shift another 10 years. 2003, April. I see Linkin Park, 50 Cent. Okay, but uh, other stuff. Cher, Celine Dion. Nora Jones, that's good. Evanescence, yeah. I mean... White Stripes, I love them. But nothing impressive, okay? Lucinda Williams. Coldplay going down. Audio Slave. Decent, decent. We're coming out of the, of the 90s. Still some decent stuff. And this was 2003. Let's go another 10 years ahead in time. 2013. And here, I think the... Uh, degradation as we were saying the uh fall the loss of quality is much more macroscopic i just look at these 
names and albums and I don't see that much. I don't see anything that's going to stay in history. Once again, maybe in 20 years, instead, we're going to look at this and say, wow. But uh, compared to 30, 40 years ago, boy, guys, boy, if we're going down. Okay, so now let's go to April of 2023. And I really, and now I feel old because I really don't know practically nothing apart, apart I don't know, Taylor Smith. Swift, see, I'm even mistaking the name, um, Miley Cyrus, okay, but, uh, yeah, the Peshmo, they, they just released a new album, but that's about it, guys, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you know these, it's incredible to see Fleetwood Mac here, but we know how that got there, thanks to TikTok and other ones, but that's it, guys, I'm depressed, Enough said. What else can I say? I mean, this whole system brought to this impoverishment, this degradation of the Sonics and also combined the artistic point of view. Okay, let's not forget them. Both of them it's down the hill. In fact, I want to underline the, the subtitle of this video. This is not nostalgic bullshit. This is the true thing, how it is. And we're going down the hill. Let's proceed. Point number five, another aspect connected to what we were talking up until now is that we have practically a huge crisis in specific sectors of music. I would say mainly the most incredible of all is the huge crisis of rock and pop. I mean, there is no evolution. In the last 10 years, maybe even more, I would say, we just have the same fluctuations, the same stuff, slightly changed and just pushed, shoved in our mouth. Eat this, eat this, eat this. It's always the same. And it's just shocking. And in fact, other types of music, we had that huge explosion of trap music, which clearly is a reaction to that. And I'm glad for who likes that type of music, you're, you're, you're doing a great work, a great job. You have to do that because apparently the other types of music are staying behind. There is no evolution. There is no changing. There are no new artists that are somehow bringing this and developing it. It's extremely frustrating, you guys. Extremely frustrating. I mean, I know it sounds like uh, an old man talking about the old good, uh, good days and how things were better before. Well, I'm 43, I'm not that old, and I think I'm pretty objective on this, you guys. Okay, let's proceed. Point number six, computer music. By computer music, I mean a series of things. Now, first of all, connected to what we were saying before, one of the reactions, the evolutions of this static situation is that a lot of people, you just have to roam YouTube. Jeez, it's filled, cram filled of people doing their own music. They just need some cracked software, Pro Tools, Ableton, whatever it is. You can find it for free practically because it's all piracy there. You just need a little simple computer, something you can just use your keyboard and you start making music. You just have to study a little bit and then you start making music. Entire albums done by computer with just a few little samples. Now, on a side note, I do like that in some occasions, in some conceptions, cons some projects are convincing and I find them very cool. I like the concept of, of sampling old stuff, recreating, merging, changing. That's cool. But in most cases, we are there is a deviation, uh, somehow, a, a, once again, a degradation uh, that something is not going in the right way there's too much of that okay too much computer music and obviously that leads also to lower quality because clearly if you're not playing instruments you're not using quality um, microphones a lot of stuff is sampled by who knows how with what mix um, mics and um, compressed and just packed all together and sent together with a, with a, a little piano synthesizer or whatever it is these huge software packages full of samplings. 
I mean, obviously, if you start using those like everyone does now, you are creating the same sound. Only the voice practically remains. But we're going to go by, uh, on that in just a few passages because also that is going down the hill. Plus, apart from all this of this concept of computer music, the good and the bad, which we, we discussed up until now, another impressive, not impressive, good, uh, scary side is what's happening with the neural networks, the, um, the deep learning algorithms that in... All parts of our society now, everything that involves creation, like photography, literature, and clearly also music, they are starting to have an artificial intelligence and creating music. You just have to put a little few inputs and they start creating autonomously new stuff. And at that point, clearly, especially in music, it's going to be really hard to distinguish what is something made by a human and something made by a machine. And the more we go ahead in that, and clearly the worst is going to get. And practically, you're just going to write a few commands in HTML or whatever it's going to be. And you're going to have entire albums practically doing nothing. Very scary. It's good. It's, for example, they use this in the Beatles to recreate the, the, the voice of John, to separate the different tracks. When used that way, it's something positive, clearly. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that album. I did a, a whole video on this. Here is a link. We, we went through a few tracks, even though I was blocked by YouTube. In any case, it was fun to discuss about the, the older version and the newer version of Revolver. But once again, a lot of um, applications of these new technologies are going towards the negative side, the dark side, where, you, where the human um, interaction um, is not having any more that much of a role because people just want to produce sell and move on produce sell and move on and very few care about the artist quality and, and a lot of people even if they care they don't have any more of those skills which is a big problem that's going to bring us to our next point let's proceed in fact our next point is the lack of skill yes guys the uh, I, for example, I remember when I went to Phonoprint, which is a very famous recording um, facility here in Italy, in Bologna. Here is a link. I did a tour and I discussed with a mastering engineer, with Pietro. And um, he, he participated to different projects, even though he's very young. And he saw, he noted, he was, he was almost embarrassed to say this, but he noticed, he did, and I bet even people with more experience are, are, think even worse that a lot of people that are coming in to record their little session, get the master and go away, don't know how to play instruments anymore. Don't know how to keep the tempo, the rhythm. I mean, that's, that's also shocking to me. We are losing every single part of what we call an artist. We can't call musicians artists anymore in a while. We can still do probably, but not anymore. I mean, it, they're just going to be technicians in, in, a, in a few years or, or I hope decades, or maybe just programmers, inf informatic computer programmers. And that's it. Because we are losing, once again, even the skills to play a guitar, to know how to sing, to, to keep the rhythm with your, with your drums and, and all, the, all these different kinds of, of things that make, that contribute to the quality. Because not only we are missing this, but everyone knows that you can correct this if you're doing something not so good. You can, in post-production, you can correct everything. So who cares? Let's proceed. Point number eight. We were talking about the voice. I wanted to dedicate a point to the abuse of auto-tune it's always been there since the last i don't know 30 years i remember with the the famous song by Cher, who revolutionized the use of, of auto-tune but now everyone is using it and abusing of it because it's been using like an effect but if for example i remember a lot of episodes of x factor which is nothing special, but I, a lot of people, a lot of young musicians, singers, who approach the program, at a certain point, the judges say, okay, 
let's turn off all your your mods because everyone is presenting their own songs just sing a cappella shit sing with nothing else and everybody was singing like this <laughs> so i mean even there you guys it's not anymore an effect because if you want to use it at an effect okay even though a little too many people are doing that in any case if it's an effect go for it but if we're, we are the most people the majority of these new musicians are using it because they can't sing anymore Please stop that. Forget about it. Let's let's proceed. Okay, so guys, as you can see, this is very depressing, truly depressing. I mean, it really makes me sad inside. And our final thought, point number 9 on this is that something I've already said in the famous video on the digital disease where everything sounds the same. We already said this from an artistic point of view and a sonic point of view. And we must react to this. Music is not this. Music is diversity. Music is dynamic. It's change. It's difference. It's things combined that create new things, but not preconceived plugins, effects just merged together with a touch of our mouse. No, not only, at least, not only, because I don't want to demonize this, okay? I don't want to completely drown this. It is cool and I like it, but it cannot be only this, or at least the majority of music production, of producing music. Okay, guys, so uh, I think we do have a signal of what is happening, a clear indication, because in our point number 10, I would like to cite some important information provided by MRC and Laminate, who, who, done, who did some analysis in 2021 and 2022, and they saw for the US market, which is the biggest market of all, that 72% of sales of today's music, considering, including streaming, every, any kind of streaming, physical media, everything, all together, 72% of the sales are reissues. Yes, that, which means only 28% is new music being sold. You guys, you musicians, people aren't buying you anymore. Remember when we, when before in the 60s, 70s, you got a diamond, a gold a record, which means you sold millions of copies and now it's just a few hundreds or not even thousands sometimes, depends a little bit by the, the country. That's insane, insane. We must react to this. So hopefully our tape dialogue together with Karim will give you a little more insight also on this physical resurgence because the vinyl resurgence and also even in a minor way the tape the reel to reel the cassette resurgence cassette culture which is something coming clearly from the 70s but it's coming back it is an approach a philosophy present it is a another sign of reaction of people that don't want this digital world at least not completely unmaterial all made in the same way with the same cliche they want something an, an experience a musical experience which considers everything the artist the sonics the feeling the smell the touch the sight uh, everything that is part of enjoying an album a true product of art okay guys Thank you again for watching, and remember, music is born analog. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.